very much. Hi everyone. It's lovely to see you all here. What an amazing time that you're all here for the inaugural Gold Coast Stories That Stir event. Did you know that four out of five women are sexually assaulted in their lifetime? Did you know that for us to heal from these moments in life, we have to give ourselves the gift of forgiveness. And we have to sell, allow ourselves to speak and use our voice and tell someone about it. When I was 12, I was first assaulted for the first time, in between the ages of 12 and 23. At 12, uh, as you can imagine, there's many people here, there's many women in this room, and maybe some men who were also assaulted when they were younger. Um, at 12, it changed who I was, as you can imagine and it changed how I felt about my body. Uh, and as a young woman, um, I come from a long line of big-breasted women, so at 12 I was growing big boobs. So what that did to me, apart from feeling ashamed, I never told anybody, so I didn't use my voice. And I started to strap my body down and change who I was and change how I dressed to hide and to hide my body as I grew up. The last time I was sexually assaulted, I was 23, and it happened at work. Uh, as a film and television hair and makeup artist, uh, I had the misfortune of being assaulted, uh, assaulted at work on set by a very famous man. His name is Rolf Harris, was Rolf Harris. In 2013, I came forward uh, because in the Rolf Harris court case. Uh, the reason I came forward is uh, when I was actually assaulted, when I was in 1986, right? In the 80s, this didn't happen to just me, this happened to women all the time. Uh, we lived in an era that we'd lived in for a long time where men touched and felt women whenever they wanted to. Where men uh, in uh, positions of power and wealth used that power and wealth uh, to take advantage of women and men uh, in um, any way they could, really. So, one night, I was watching a current affair on TV and this woman was on TV and she was talking about being assaulted by Rolf Harris when she was 15. And she was working with him uh, as a, a childhood, uh, I think she was, a, she was a dancer in a dance troupe. A dance troupe. I was watching this um, with my husband at home and um, I knew she wasn't lying. At the time this woman had been dragged through the coals by the press and people thought she was lying because women, we, we don't get assaulted, we never tell the truth and we always lie. And we only ever, we only ever come out and speak for the money, of course. That's what everybody does, you know, we're not actually, not actually speaking out for justice. So back in 2013, this woman was being crucified by the press. In 1986, I didn't keep my assault a secret. I told everybody, I told my parents, you know. My parents were excited about me working with Rolf Harris. I watched him from when I was little, I mean, you know, black and white TV, and, and my friends were excited. He was the biggest star that walked through Channel 7's doors, you know. Uh, so when I saw this young woman who was in her 40s, talking about her assault and being accused of being a liar, I knew that she wasn't lying, so I had to come forward. So I came forward in the court case, not for me, I came forward for this woman who was a little girl. My 12-year-old girl inside me wasn't going to allow me to be quiet this time. And if I didn't come forward, for me, I'd be a complete hypocrite uh, because I told everybody. People would ask me, I've been a makeup artist in film and television for 40 years now. I've worked with amazing stars international, national, and people will always say to me, who's the best and the worst person that you've worked with? Well, the best person will change, because, you know, it just depends. But the worst person was always him. Uh, so, you know, so when I saw this woman uh, on television, I knew she wasn't lying, I came forward. I was chosen by the judge to be part of the case uh, with another nine women and one man. So there was 10 of us. In an era in society where people didn't listen, uh, and with a star that was so big that people in the UK, in Australia, nobody believed us. Nobody believed that this man was a pedophile or that he would assault women or young girls or anything like that. Society wasn't ready to believe that this man would do these things. So consequently, in the court case, we were all given lifetime anonymity for our own safety. Millions of people got their Susie hate on uh, I was like, they didn't know my name and they weren't allowed to print my name or what I looked like. 
Uh, but I was found by the BBC the, the, the day after the court case. And there's things that people don't know about the path that I went through in my court case, right? So I was found, so I had press for the next three weeks when I was in the UK uh, hassling me to tell my story, but it wasn't about me. It was about them. We won the court case, as many of you would know. Rob Harris was sentenced to five years and nine months um, and was sentenced to a, a very small uh, kind of amount of time because it was based on historical crimes. But the thing about this court case that it was important and still is now is that the first court case in the UK to listen to victim survivors of historical crimes and they heard us, they didn't just listen, they heard. And Operation U Tree was born in the UK and many entertainers were taken down because the, uh, they'd been getting away with behaviour that wasn't right for society for a long time. There's no rules in the entertainment industry as there is in the corporate world. We don't have an h and department. If you've got a problem, it's like, well, suck it up, sweetheart, because you've got someone behind you that wants your job. It, it was always like that, and it's always been there. So we, we, so that's what happened in 2014. And I came forward, we only have 10 minutes to talk to you today, so I'm telling you my whole transformation story. So came home, at the time when I was in court, I was, I'd been married, I was married for a long time, I was not in a happy place with my marriage, my husband, he was suffering from depression, anger management, we'd moved to Queensland, I had no friends, I had no family, uh, we were living in a black hole and a black hole that had no light at the end of it. I was living in a very much of a sameness. One day, one day, the most amazing thing happened. Now, I'm a, I'm a big believer in um, paying attention to the whispers of the universe, because sometimes that happens. I got a whisper from the universe. This woman had seen my photo on Star Now about being an 